Once the explosion takes place, the shock wave goes past you, then you're gonna have to watch out for a flying frag, which could definitely kill you. I'm Jocko Willink, and this is The Breakdown. This is Tears of the Sun. The term SEAL actually stands for sea, air, and land. And what that means is that we can use any of those mediums to get to a target. This is a movie about SEALs going into another country to rescue someone that is being held against their will. That is something that can happen. It can happen on a small scale where you're going to rescue one or two people. And it also happens sometimes on a larger scale. Let's say a country is being overthrown or there's a coup and a lot of Americans are in danger. Well, then the US military will spin up its resources, go in there and conduct a non-combatant evacuation operation where you take all the American citizens out of a country as safely and quickly as possible. It's almost always a factor that when you do military operations, there's gonna be civilians that you have to interact with, whether they're innocent civilians or maybe they're compliant with the enemy that you're dealing with. Maybe they're actually sympathizers for the enemy. Nonetheless, you'll have to deal with civilians and it looks like they're dealing with some civilians in this movie. The United States military and most military around the world go through great lengths to protect innocent civilians in a wartime scenario. You have to be very careful with where you're shooting. You have to positively identify your target. You have to make sure that when you're conducting operations, you calculate where the civilians are and how you're gonna contend with them once the operation starts. Terrain is very important in combat, and one of the early lessons that you learn is using what's called cover or concealment. Concealment is something that you can hide behind, but it doesn't actually give you protection from enemy fire. Cover is something that you can hide behind that does give you protection. So you prefer to be able to take cover, but you don't always have that option. Your next best option is to get concealment, which means you're in a position where the enemy can't see you and maybe aim their weapon at you. So if all you have the option for is tall grass like this, then that's what you're gonna use. When you're out in the field, there's all kinds of things that are around you. They're not always the enemy. So a, a situation like this, he hears movement out there and it happens to be a pig. This is something that could happen. When you're moving through a closed terrain like that, hearing is one of your best senses. And so as you listen, you might not be able to discriminate between what's an enemy person walking and in this case, a pig. You have to try and pay attention, but you still have to address the threats because you can't be 100% sure of what something is. Clear LT, it's just a pig. I'm crossing over. Sniper 11 o'clock. Snipers have a very scary advantage. In a situation like this, you're staring at 270 degrees of pure threat. A sniper has to take one shot, and that's what just happened. It'd be impossible to stop that in this particular situation. I got hit. Once a guy was wounded, one of the other guys launched a 40 millimeter grenade into the general area where they thought the sniper might be. And then some other guys moved forward to try and start to stabilize this guy that just been wounded. The thing that's unrealistic is you wouldn't know particularly where this shot had come from most likely. So what you'd probably be doing in this case is putting down a heavy volume of machine gun fire in that general direction, then moving forward to try and get to this individual that's been wounded. He's all right. We're on the shoulder, clean hit though. So the person that's taking care of the wounded guy, he might be the platoon corpsman, which is basically in, in a SEAL platoon, that's their medic. But also every guy in a SEAL platoon knows how to give that first primary trauma care. So it could have been anyone in his platoon that went up and stopped the bleeding and got a bandage on it. Inside of a SEAL platoon and really inside of any military unit, 
We use standard operating procedures. Everyone is gonna have their medical gear in the same spot. If there's a problem, someone will come up, grab your med kit, and start working on you with your med kit. It looks like they're just throwing some pressure onto his shoulder to stop some of the bleeding, but it must not be that bad because he seems to be doing all right. <laughs> Looks like they're trying to show sort of a traditional cover and move. They're doing it a little bit backwards because it looks like the guys, when they get up, they're shooting. And then when they lay down, they're not shooting. It should be the opposite. It should be when you're down and you can actually handle your weapon, you're shooting. And then when you're up and moving, you're not shooting because you can't really shoot that accurately. Not that you can never shoot when you're moving, but it looks like that's what they're trying to show here. You see the guys laying down and then rolling over. What they're trying to simulate is when you're in a firefight, you don't want to lay down and then get back up in the exact same spot because if the enemy saw you lay down, they'll be looking for you when you stand back up and they'll shoot you. What you'll do is get down and then move so when you stand back up, you're in a different location. Whether you're going to do this kind of crazy looking combat roll, probably not likely. You're probably just going to slide over, move over, crawl over to a new location before you get back up. But I guess that wouldn't look as good for the camera. Grenade! some grenades in this scene and grenades are a great weapon. They don't quite provide this massive impact with people flying through the air after a grenade goes off, but they are a great weapon to use. You do have to be careful, especially in a jungle environment when you throw grenades. If they hit a tree branch, they could come back at you and that could be a real problem. So you have to pay attention to what you're doing. We throw a lot of real grenades in training and then we throw also simulated grenades. So we get used to throwing grenades, going through the procedures, pulling the pin, keeping the spoon on, cooking it off if you want to and then hucking that grenade into a good location. Let me rewind this part. Grenade! One thing that they do right there, they actually yell grenade when they're throwing the grenade, which is not what you do. You don't yell grenade when you throw a grenade. What grenade means when you yell it is that there's someone threw a grenade at us. In the SEAL teams, there's a different word that we yell when we're gonna throw a grenade, and that's not it. A little note, but they probably did it to not give away some information, just like I'm not gonna say anything else about it. What the Nigerians are shooting back at them are RPGs, rocket propelled grenades. And once these guys are getting close to the enemy, they're shooting as they're moving, which is perfectly acceptable. I would say my assessment is that these individuals probably spent three or four days on a range with a technical advisor, learning how to shoot the weapons. And then they kind of married that with their own vision of what shooting would look like and what would make it look cool. That's what you end up with. And once the firefight is over, what they actually need to do is set security and make sure that they are in a secure position that the enemy doesn't flank them or counterattack before they go and try and recover, I guess, the American that they're looking for. Dr. That's the mission that they're there to execute, so they're gonna get that job done, but they should definitely set security. You always gotta watch your flanks. Next up, Battleship. I would say I probably played the game Battleship on total of three times before I realized I wanted a machine gun in my hand. It doesn't seem really necessary to make up a movie like this. You know, you could look at the American Navy fighting against the Japanese Imperial Navy in World War II, and you could get as much drama and heroics as you could possibly imagine. America has fought fierce enemies and we should probably make movies to remember those efforts instead of making up these random science fiction things. As far as my knowledge of fictional alien weapon systems, I don't know, but this weapon system is supposed to be, you know, something similar to an American warship that locks onto targets using radar, laser range finders, and a bunch of other high-speed technology to locate and fix on an enemy target. Incoming headed for the John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones' famous quote is, don't give up the ship. And he's got a ship named after him, the John Paul Jones, which is now under attack by an alien naval vessel. This is dumb. Unknown inbound at Ohio. Vampire, 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 killing with sea whiz. The 
fighting of the ship is done from a place called the Combat Information Center, I think, the CIC. And that's a room where there's a bunch of monitors, radars, and a bunch of information is being pumped in there, and then people are making decisions in there. Come down inbound, that's who hired Vampire, 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 killing with sea with. She says something like there's inbound rounds coming their way. He says, verify, verify. And then he says, killing with sea whiz, which the sea whiz is the weapon system, which is shooting a massive amount of rounds out at an incoming object. And again, these are just sort of what some inexperienced Hollywood screenwriter thought would sound cool to explain what was happening in the situation and fill some verbiage in there. Firing it up! The little boat that you're seeing is called the rib, a rigid hull inflatable boat, which usually launches off of one of these larger vessels. And in this particular case, it's got a GAL minigun on it, which shoots thousands and thousands of rounds per minute. That's not a normal armament for a normal fleet rib but this is a movie and it's not a good movie. So I guess they put it in there for some reason. The way that US Navy ships are built, if there is a breach in one part of the hull, you can seal that section of the ship off with big giant waterproof doors. And the whole ship is cut up into these little sections. So if there's a breach in the hole somewhere, you simply shut the hatches around that area and the water can't go any further. <laughs> If a ship was detonated by alien weaponry into multiple pieces like this and you were close by to it, you would have to watch out for the impact of fragmentation. First, there would be a shock wave, which likely wouldn't hurt you depending on the enemy armament. But once the explosion takes place, the shock wave goes past you, then you're gonna have to watch out for a flying frag, which could definitely kill you. The only bigger threat from the flying frag would be having to sit through a movie like this. Last but not least, behind enemy lines. Even though this guy is a Navy pilot, if he needs to be rescued from being shot down, it's likely going to be some kind of a search and rescue. In a search and rescue or down pilot recovery, there's a high likelihood that you're gonna use helicopters because you can launch them, you can land very close to or on top of the down pilot. You can get him on board the helicopters and leave. So the only thing that might prevent that is if it was a massive surface to air threat, then maybe ground troops would have to walk in to recover the pilot, walk back out, and then get to a point where they could safely get on board of helicopters. And this is Marine Corps helicopters, Huey helicopters that have been around since Vietnam. It looks like they're going in unescorted by any attack helicopters, but it's a movie. We're gonna deal with it. I've never seen this movie before. Maybe what they're trying to show with a little blinking light is some kind of a transponder that's signaling the location of the downed pilot to aircraft overhead. If it was it's supposed to be a transponder, transponders don't make beeping noises and have red flashing lights. <laughs> Owen Wilson's character is a pilot, which means there's a high likelihood he would not be traveling with a battle rifle of any kind. He's gonna travel with a pistol just in case he got shot down. For some reason, he took a lot of time to get in this stealthy position and trick this sniper to come out into the open. It seems like it would have been a better idea just to sort of not make a big show of yourself so that the sniper would know you were there and then shoot the sniper in the back. But once again, for purposes of drama, he makes this giant entry into the scene, bursting out of the snow. Very exciting.
that are pilots don't get a lot of training with weapons because they're pilots and their primary job is flying aircraft. They do get a little bit of time learning how to shoot guns, but it's definitely not their primary skill set, which is why he just missed this shot like eight times in a row or whatever. If he was uh, more experienced, this scene wouldn't be very exciting because he would have tactically slowly gotten out of his concealed position and put one round into this enemy's head. <laughs> As far as the hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's the same thing. Pilots are not gonna get a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat training because that is not their primary, secondary, or even tertiary mission. I think what we have to hope for is that this pilot either wrestled or boxed or did jujitsu at some point in his life. <laughs> actual weapon used to kill the enemy sniper is what appears to be a flare gun. And we do have these little pencil flares that are very small. They're about the size of a pencil and they shoot a very small flare, almost like a tracer round from a bullet. Last ditch, if someone was flying overhead, you could shoot this thing and they might be able to see you. It seems like that's what they're trying to portray, that he fires off some kind of a small flare like that and then sticks it into the guy's sternum for the kill shot. I think really what we're hoping is that Owen Wilson focuses more on Wes Anderson from here on out. That was just the breakdown from GQ. Thanks for watching.